So now I'm joined by betting editor Paul Keeley. In a moment, we're going to hear his back lay each way selections for Cheltenham. Paul, you've been away for a few weeks. We've missed you here, but you've been at the Cheltenham preview nights in Ireland. How's that gone? Uh, yeah, very good. Very boozy. I can't tell you I remember that much <laughs> of them, uh, especially the two I went to in Ireland. I was on one of them and I watched another. Um, but yeah, they were good fun. Well, I was going to ask you, actually, I don't know whether you'll be able to remember anything, but we put a whispers piece together, a race course whispers piece, and I was wondering if you had got any whispers for us. Um, from well, there seems to be a very strong word going around for wonderful charm. Um, now in the world hurdle, he's, he's almost certain to go there now, and he's rated only 149, so he's, you know, he's got a stone and a half to find with the best of them. But uh, he, um, you know, he seems to be you know, one of the gossip horses about. Mm. And another one in the Cold Cup, um, five for three is now an 11 year old is, is supposed to be working the house down and um, they think it'll go well off a mark of one four three I think they said mm. it was I haven't looked at him since I got back but uh, you know obviously he's a former winner when he was when he was a young we're gonna go through your backs lays and each ways for the festival you've got plenty for us so mm. we're gonna start in the supreme where you'll be backing melodic rendezvous or you probably already backed him yeah yeah I backed him uh, I backed him a little while ago um, you know basically one well, of those horses done nothing wrong he won a great one at Sandown um, in good style um, from a horse called Pendra, who um, the Longsons think an awful lot mm -hmm. of. Um, he's he's come out and he's thrash puffing Billy. I know there was excuses for him, but you know he looks he looks a very decent horse. And I think with a with a bigger trainer than Jeremy Scott, it'd be shorter in the betting than he is. And you're getting that you know extra odds because because of the trainer and the trainer knows exactly what he's doing. And um, I think you know we're going to get this. I think probably get the softest ground on the Tuesday. Um, he probably wants a bit of cut, mm -hmm. although the trainer said you know thought he want he, he thought he wanted decent ground. Um, I, you know I think he's a, he's he's a good selection for a race that is far tighter than the betting would have you with my turn or yours so short. And you're also backing Rock on Ruby. You think he can follow up on last year? Yeah, I don't see why not. To be honest, I mean he won the race easily last year. Everyone said he got an easy way up front, but that's nonsense because he ran much much faster than the champion earlier the year before. Uh, he. He really stepped it up from three out. Um, the chasing pack were closer to him at the last than they were at the line, which means he went away from them again. Uh, the trainer's prepared him solely for this. Mm -hmm. He's just hit form with a double on Thursday. Um, I think he's got to go very, very close. He might have to do all the donkey work because there's a, there's, you know, we're going to have a small field. There's no overturn in the race, um, and he'll want to make it a test because he'll want to, he'll want to test how he can fly stamina again. You know, so but I, I still think he's the one. And the Druid's nephew in the novice handicap, Jace? Yeah, I like him because he's just got loads of form with horses that are that are rated much higher than him now. He was second to a horse called Hadrian's Approach at Ascot with Rolling Aces behind him. Um, Hadrian's Approach is rated 147. Rolling Aces is rated 153. Um, he's rated 135. He then beat Grandioso last time out. Grandioso won his next two, is now rated 145. So he's obviously extremely well handicapped if he can make the improvement that those have made in subsequent races. Now, there are loads of horses like that in the race. There's Carlito Briganti, who's off a lower mark than, uh, than he was when he won the Coral mm -hmm. Cup two years ago. And, you know, there's plenty of others who will be of interest. But, you know, I think he's quite decent. And, you know, if the ground is drier than it has been, that'll suit him as well. All right. Now, we're going to talk about the world hurdle now, in which you have very strong opinions on why Oscar Whiskey won't win. But before that, we're going to hear from Nicky Henderson from a recent Open Day with his thoughts on Paul's opinion that Oscar Whiskey should be going for the champion hurdle, not the world hurdle. I see there's one bright spark in the racing post who obviously likes me a lot, said that my decision to run him in the stairs hurdle was the silliest decision he'd ever known in the history of racing. <laughs> and he hopes the idiots will now wake up and run him over two miles. But I've been called a lot of things before, but that fella's really got it. <laughs> So, no doubt he's coming to take over very shortly. Do we know he's none? No, he was some betting man. He called it the silliest decision he'd ever seen. Are you showing him that what he said? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's. <laughs> So, Paul, uh, Nicky Henderson wasn't very happy with your opinions there. He wasn't. I, um, I spoke to him after that and we have agreed to disagree, but, you know, mm -hmm. in a very friendly way. He was quite nice about it. He bought you it, a drink, uh, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, did he? He bought me a drink at the uh, Derby Awards. Uh, but, you know, the more I see it, you know, it, 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 to, be, to be fair, since then he's running the cleave and he's run mm -hmm. the next second of Oscar Whiskey and every line of form suggests that he's the big danger to, to Rev de Sivilla. So he ran, he ran second to Rev de Sivilla. But they still went slow enough there. 
and you know it might have been heavy ground, but it's yet to be proven to me that you know a slow run race on heavy ground is more stamina sapping than a fast run race on good ground. You know he might have to cover the same distances about forty seconds faster, and if you flat out for longer, that is going to test mm. your stamina. You know that that's that's my view of it, and. You know, he was all out and got beat, whereas he's been winning, he's been showing similar form, winning over two and a half miles on the bridle. So, you know, there, I think there's a, there's a limit to his actual ability, um, which I don't think people necessarily realise, because, you know, when he's run on good ground against the likes of um, Thousand Stars at Aintree, you know, he's been all out, you know, running to the same sort of level as when he's been winning on the bridle. So I, don't, I do think he has a limit. And um, I do think he has a limit of stamina as well. All right, and your final back is R. Connor in the Triumph. Irish horse, really impressive this uh, time. Yeah, I thought, you know, I just think he's, he, he is the best, the best of the juveniles. He, you know, they went really fast in that race in Ireland and he picked up the leader really easily. And having been, you know, in Ireland on, uh, on uh, Monday, uh, Patrick Mullings said that you know they couldn't believe that a horse would go go past Dear Carly quite as easily as he did, mm -hmm. right? You know, so they obviously think a fair, fair bit of that one, and he trounced it five lengths. I think that probably represents the best the best form, but you know, wait until the day because you know they're they're all a bit tight at the front of the market, and it'll be a big field, and they'll probably drift. And on the run up towards the finish, it's our Connor who's going to extend his winning run over hurdles and wins in great style for Brian Cooper and Desi Hughes. Our Connor beats Dia Carly. All right, well, that's all of Paul's best bets for the festival. Now we're going to move on to his lays. My tent or yours, obviously, in the Supreme. You're going against. Why is that? Um, because I'm worried about his stamina if they get a strong run race because he, didn't, he hasn't run in a strong run race. You can be as impressed as you want to be with his, with his bet for a hurdle win, but they went... So slow, the three milers in the race two in an hour before actually covered the first two mile faster than my tent or yours. Right, and basically, what he did is he killed them from the first, la third last to the last, and and he went very, very fast. But you know, he's flat bred, he's by a QE2 mm -hmm. winner out of a half sister, a conduit, so he's bred to be fast on the flat, and he probably would be quite decent. Uh, you know, but they actually slowed down quite dramatically after the last, and I just wonder how much they'll be if he has to run seven or eight lengths per furlong faster just to get him into the race. You know, at the second last, so you know, I would definitely question his stamina because a horse like Champagne Fever, uh, who's going to run in the race, um, he's going to make it a test. Yeah. Right. So he's not going to get a free ride into it. So given that he's a six to four shot, I'll be taking him up. Okay, so laying my tent or yours. Your final lay is Sir Deschamps in the Gold Cup. You've never really been a fan of this horse. I well, know you either get the bug about a horse or you don't, mm. don't you? Like you know, and you know the form. You know, he looked he looked fantastic when he won the when he won the Juice in last yeah. year. But he beat a horse four and a half lengths, Champion Court. And although Champion Court looked good, he still only rated one hundred and fifty five. Mm. So we're not talking we're not talking outstanding form. And there is nothing that Sir Deschamps has done this year that entitles him to be four or one for the Gold Cup. There just isn't. Mm. Like, you know, he got thrashed by Fleming Star. Then he got. Then there was four horses in a line and a Lexus. Like you know, I mean, if four horses finish in a line in a Derby trial, you just say straight away, none of them have got a chance of winning the Derby. The Derby, but this horse is second favourite. Right, and he beat Fleming Star again when Fleming Star got a bad ride, bad tactics. Right, and the times, um, the time differences between the two tracks, the hurdles and the chase course, suggest they went at least a furlong further. Right, so they probably run three mile one furlong in that race anyway, which would have found Fleming Star out. So I don't think he ran any different um, to the time before, and it's just not good enough to win a Gold Cup. Who's your Gold Cup fancy? My Gold Cup fancy each way is um, well, I, I like two. I think Silviniaco Conti's got mm. the strongest, got the strongest form. He's done it from behind um, last time when giving weight to the giant bolster who was runner up last year. Did that easily. He's done it from the front as well by beating, beating Long Run, who won the King George next time. So he's rock solid. But Captain Chris is. You know, he's the overpriced horse in the race for me, especially if the ground dries out, because he's been running, he's been running as well as he's ever run um, on bad ground, which he hates. Jumping is that a concern? Uh, yeah, him? jumping is a concern because he makes his own mind up, as yeah. he did as he did two out at Ascot. He mm. just decided to come up, and it must have shocked Richard Johnson that he did because he was so far away from the fence when he did. So you're always going to have that problem, but you know, you, you get that built into the price, don't you? He's definitely got the ability to be in there. So Captain Chris is an each way selection for Paul, and your final each way selection is who blunders Obo for Venetia Williams. Yeah, I think he's badly underrated in the market, especially mm. especially if Dynast runs in the Juice, and which is becoming more and more possible by the day, by all accounts. Um, even even if not, this horse just runs to a sound level of form, and he wants 
a decent trip and a strong pace, which he hasn't really had this year. You know, he's been running at two and a half miles, he's been putting up solid form against the likes of Captain Conan. And, you know, his best hurdles forms at Cheltenham. He's won a three mile handicap hurdle there. He was fourth in last year's attempts. But, you know, if it turns into a bit of a slog, um, he's going to run his race. And I'll be very surprised if he's not there or thereabouts at the second last. And, it'll, you know, it'll take three good ones to get past him, and he's mm. still 25 to 1. And with the form that Venetia Williams has been in this season, you'd think she'd well, have yeah, a winner, wouldn't you? She's in absolute cracking form, mm. and she, you know, she's never had any intention of running him in a handicap. You know, she, she, as soon as he was second in the Reynolds down, she took him straight out of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the four mile, and, you know, this is it, the RSA is the target. So she obviously thinks a fair bit of it. All right, well, thank you for all those selections, right. Paul. Are you going to Cheltenham? On the Friday. We'll see when you there. discipline will go out the window. Will it be another boozy one? Very much so. I'm sure it will. <laughs>